everyone welcome back to project review youtube channel this is me sinad anand welcome to the second part of the series on customer churn prediction using machine learning in our previous video i had explained you about customer churn prediction exploratory data analysis on the customer churn data set and also inferred insights using data visualization so in this video i'm going to be explaining you and demonstrating as to how you could build machine learning models in order to predict uh, customer churn and uh, i'll also be delving into the model selection techniques uh, something about how to optimize the machine learning performance and also model evaluation metrics and in which scenario which machine learning model to go with and which evaluation metric is you know we should consider in under what scenario so let's delve into this topic so in the previous video i had explained you how the plan is going to be of this series so basically this a particular series on customer churn prediction i have divided into three parts by previous video i have covered in the previous video i have covered about the part 1 today's video is going to be the part 2 so today i'm going to be explaining you about machine learning model building selection and evaluation for predicting customer churn i'll be explaining you something about you know which machine learning models actually perform better on this particular kind of data set we are going to act, uh, do a performance you know uh, we are going to compare the performance of machine learning models then i'll be explaining you about which uh, some of the strategies and tips as to in general which you know how to select machine learning models and under which data and scenario and the part 3 will then be leveraging pycaret auto ml module in order to leverage uh, the same for customer churn prediction so you know in my previous video I had explained about what is the problem statement we worked on, and I also uh, in the collaborative file started with the EDA process. Now that you know about what the problem statement is, let me explain you about something about the techniques of machine learning that you should be familiar with. The data set we have, we had, we has, uh, uh, as you know, we have the imbalanced data set, which was there even in the previous video as, as I've shown. So imbalanced data set is a data set which has uneven distribution of data. So there are classes, you know, they can be majority classes and minority classes which are unevenly distributed. so when we say in machine learning which technique or which model we will actually go with it all depends on the data we have pre processed the data performed eda and got to know about what the features are we have done feature engineering drop the un uh, irredent you know irrelevant features from the data set now coming into you know what machine learning model to actually go about with let me explain you that you know there are different types of machine learning models so firstly uh, you could take in machine learning you could go for regression or classification the problem at hand was classification problem because we had a target column which was exited or the churn column which had you know binary classes 1 and 0 1 which means that the customer has churned and 0 implies that there is no exit of the customer from the services so we you know for such techniques we'll delve into i would like to explain you what are the different ml algorithms i, I will be leveraging in, uh, in the collab file so talking about what firstly i would like to explain you what is ensemble technique so i'll be explaining you about random forest and we also demonstrating that in the code so um, random forest and decision trees so before that you should know something about ensemble methods what they are in machine learning so ensemble methods you can see they aim to combine the predictions of several base estimators built with a given learning algorithm to improve robustness over a single estimator something like combination of the results so in ensemble methods also there are two types which is bagging and boosting techniques so when we say what why ensemble is actually ideal for classification regression and especially for imbalanced data set we should uh, you know i highly recommend ensemble techniques and the reason being that they reduce bias and variance you if you know something about what is bias and variance and you know if you heard about the term of bias variance trade off you know in any ml model be it, you know if you are building a machine learning model or a deep learning model you should always keep in mind to ensure a bias variance trade off a balance between bias and variance so that is what is regularization and ensemble techniques are actually ideal for achieving so when i say the famous ensemble methods are boosting and bagging what is the difference between them in a nutshell i would say bagging is a homogeneous weak learners model and that learns from each other independently in parallel so for you know parallel learning between the models is bagging whereas sequentially if you are making the Uh, you know the weak estimators learn from each other that is boosting and uh, bagging you know the random forest model is an example of bagging i'll be demonstrating that in the code whereas even in if you consider boosting the examples of boosting are eda boosting gradient boosting extreme gradient boosting which is xg boost and so on so in boosting you know it's also a homogeneous weak learners model but it, the difference between bagging and boosting as i've told boosting uh, you know the learners learn sequentially and adaptively to improve the machine learning overall machine learning combined performance 
then coming to now that you've understood you know what you have got a clarity about why the term ensemble is because it uses a combination of the learners so coming into the next kind of an algorithm which is logistic regression logistic regression could ensure as a machine learning model that is widely used for binary classification tasks so when you have a target column which has you know either yes or a no kind of thing or you have one or zero especially it's used for that so when you have this logistic regression it takes only one of the two possible values it has feature labels so when i say feature variables it has more it can be one or more feature variables which are independent whereas you have one dependent variable so the relationship between a set of independent variables and a dependent binary variable is actually uh, you know predicted with logistic regression and even logistic regression can actually be used for predicting customer churn as well which i'll be explaining you coming into decision tree now that you know uh, there is a lot of confusion uh, between what is a decision how different is a decision tree is from random forest i would say the random forest comes under ensemble method because it leverages backing technique now that you've understood what is backing technique but on the other hand decision tree the difference is that both of them firstly are supervised learning you know supervised learning machine learning algorithms but decision tree it is used for both classification and regression mostly it is preferred for classification algorithm but more, the difference is that decision tree you know it is a tree structure it's a tree structure classifier where internal nodes it has three nodes internal nodes leaf nodes and the branches so the internal nodes represent the features of the data set the independent variables you have the branches denoting the decisions whereas the leaf node represents the outcome the final outcome or the class you know categorical it can be a categorical variable uh, it's a graphical representation of all the possible solutions to a problem or decision based on given conditions so that is why it's called as a decision tree because it's similar to a tree so customer churn prediction model is used for deducing hidden patterns of the data set and you know when you talk about this is for spm which is support vector machine although i would not be demonstrating support vector machine i'll be going with decision tree random forest and logistic regression for this tutorial because uh, they seem to perform better and they give good results especially because our data set is imbalanced data set so i would say that going with decision tree or you know go with, going with ensemble methods will actually lead to better results and that you know how can i actually claim or get in you know uh i'm confidently saying that go ahead with this model is that you know i would later delve into the part of how to select um, ml models for which scenario but put in general that for imbalanced data these models gave me better results then coming to svm simple term, in simple i'll put it that support vector machine the main goal of that is to maximize the hyperplane the, ma the margin of separation between two hyperplanes so we have a high dimensional space and basically it uses uh, machine learning uh you know it uses mathematical equations to represent a given a set of variables and the main the main uh, goal you have to understand is that svm aims to maximize the margin of separation between the two hyperplanes that is the hyperplanes consists of data points so that is svm and that was all about the machine learning you know the models that i would like to know introduction before delving into the model building part now coming into this uh, in the in the collab in the previous video i had explained you till here where i, I dropped the customer id feature because that was not having any relevance or significance uh, in determining or predicting the customer churn now uh, once we have delved over here we were over here where we have talked about how to encode or how to convert uh you know the string vectors or be any words into the numerical feature form so for that i talked about label encoding or some kind of encoding which has to be performed be it label encoding or one hot encoding i would like to explain you the rule of thumb the rule of thumb should be that for label encoding is basically used for binary categorical variables and ordinal variables so the difference is that you know binary categorical variables as you know it's like two classes binary it stands for that so yes or no and it's ideal for that and ordinal variables ordinal variables are those variables who have ranking suppose say first second third that has a ranking in a relationship between the place or the order that is ordinal variables say it's it's based on the order but one hot encoding on the other hand it's non ordinal categorical variables with low to mid cardinality so in our case i would say that one hot encoding is a better option because it has non ordinal there is no such you know order as such it's not like first or second we just have categorical variables 0 and 1 and uh, which are non ordinal so that's why we'll be going with one hot encoding and target encoding is uh, another type of encoding technique which uh, is well was you know well suited for categorical variables so coming into you know how you could actually make use of uh, one hot encoding and how to actually one hot 
the one hundred encode the features. I would say that we have these columns. So features of the columns. We have the columns like surname, credit score, geography, gender, and so on. And I would like to one hot encode them. This particular PD dot PD stands for pandas dot get dummies method is a non SQLearn method. You could do it with the SQLearn method as well, but SQLearn method requires the uh, importing of SQLearn library, and from there the one hot encoding of uh, the library. Or if say if you're going with label encoder, the label encoder. A class has to be imported, but I'm doing that with the non-scalar method, which is pretty simple. So uh, PD or get dummies, the features and the overview of the data. So you will see that it has been already one hot encoded. The words basically something like the surname and others have been one hot encoded. The features have been one hot encoded into numerical forms because machines can only understand as you know binary binary data, which is zero and one. So we have converted. Or encoded into the numerical form. Now, dividing the data set and separating the target column from it. This is very important before you jump into building machine learning models. I would say because you should have the target variable always separated out because that is you know that is where you're going to actually. Uh, since it's a supervised learning technique, it's a label. It acts as a, in a label data set that acts as the target label. So you're separating it out by using the lock method here in Python. Y over here is the target variable, and X is the feature label. Now that you have divided it, now comes the train test split, which is very you know before any machine learning building. This is what we do. We are dividing the data set, entire data set. We have into train data set and test data set. Test data set, also, you know, it's called as the validation data set or holdout data set. So that is mostly important because you are going to actually predict the performance, or you are going to train your machine learning model on the train data set and evaluate the performance of the model on something called as a test data set or the validation data set. And that is where you will get to understand. Whether your model is overfitting, underperforming, or say underfitting, overfitting, or it's actually giving a bias variance trade-off, which is nothing but uh, performing well. So when I'm doing this train, I've imported this library train test split, uh, split, and then test size 0.3. So I'm going to divide 70%. I've give the data like 70% to training, 30% to testing. Random state is a value which I've set over here to 10. Now I've imported the matrix from SQLearn library, which is uh, accuracy score, classification report, and confusion matrix. These three are very important to be imported, you know, because you're actually going to get, you want to get a accuracy score, a metric of evaluation. How you going to actually, you know, it's very important after you build the model, you have to actually compare the performance of the models. So I'm going to build logistic regression, random forest, adaptation, decision tree. Also later, I'll be comparing the performance of each of them. So now to compare, you need some kind of metric. And for learning about what metric to go ahead with, the most common being accuracy. But do you think accuracy? We should actually go ahead. We should actually go ahead with only accuracy. In my opinion, I would say it depends on the data. So if your data is imbalanced, as we are dealing with the imbalanced data, I would say that accuracy is not a correct metric of evaluation. This is very important in building machine learning models. So you know you should know which uh, evaluation metric to actually consider, which will be a reliable metric for you to actually evaluate your models. So when I say it's a dis imbalanced data set, going ahead with precision, uh, you know F1 score recall, or even AUC curve, which stands for area under the curve. AOC ROC curve that is that will actually give you a better picture of how your model is performing on the test data of course so that is all about you know uh, the the matrix so accuracy score classification report classification report is going to give you the overview of the you know the results classification confusion matrix is a square matrix of your two positive you know the two positive false positive true negative and false negative so once you've imported the necessary libraries, coming to ML models, we have logistic, you know, we are aiming to build logistic regression, random forest and decision trees. So I've imported the necessary libraries here. This is how we, you know, call and you know, build the model. So LR stands for, I've just given a name, uh, the variable name. I'm fitting the model over here, which is after we, you know, to train the model basically. So I'm passing in the parameters X train and Y trains. You know, X train and Y train are the ones in the train test split, which I have divided. I have the four parameters here x train x test y train and y test i'm passing in the train variables that is x train and y train to the fit for fitting the model that is for training the model now once that is done lr or predict is actually to predict the customer churn or value you know give us a prediction on the test data set so that is why i'm passing x test over here uh, you know, to in order to get the accuracy score, confusion matrix, and classification report after training on running this cell, this is what I've got here. So you will see that accuracy score is achieved by the uh, logistic regression is 80, 80 around 84.13 percent. This is the confusion matrix and the classification report showing the precision of around 0 0.86, which is 86 percent, 71 percent, and the other matrix of evaluation as well. Now, one now that you've understood what about is this uh, logistic regression. 
similarly, I've tried to build a random forest classifier by importing in the sklearn library and then the ensemble methods. Now, since I've told random forest comes under ensemble methods, that is why sklearn.ensemble. Then build the random forest classifier over here with passing in the random status 10. Fitted the uh, X train and Y train parameters to train the model and then got the matrix of evaluation. You will see 82.5% around accuracy. But as I've told, accuracy is not, you know, only the matrix of evaluation. You'll always be able to look into the other matrix as well, like precision recall F1 score. We see it recall is pretty fine for the, uh, the zero class which says that customers have not churned. But the customers who have churned, the recall is pretty low. So that is, you know, something to be measured. But do you think we should go with recall or should we go with F1 score or something called as area under the curve? So, you know, in general, put it theoretically, area under the curve performs better for, you know, it gives us a better clarity of the picture for imbalanced data set. But you can have a look at the other metrics of evaluation as well. Once you have done this, now comes the time to build the decision tree classifier. This is how I've just, similar to the previous methods, I've called in the decision tree classifier. You know, guinea is the criteria. This is the parameter for decision tree classifier, which decides the split. Decision tree being a tree-like structure, you know, before branching out from a node into the further node, subsequent nodes, you need to define a criteria for splitting. And that criteria is decided by Guinea index. You set a random state of 100, max depth is 3, and minimum sample leaves is 5. These are the hyper parameters, by the way. I'll be delving into how to choose. This is by the experimental value, which give me good results. But, you know, you need some tips as to which uh, hyper parameter to choose and all. That I'll be, you know, just delving after what I say this. So uh, we see that this is the confusion matrix and this is the classification report. Once you've this, uh, we've built these three models. Now, a tip about hyperparameter tuning is that random search CV and grid search CV are the two methods which are especially favorable for decision tree and random forest whenever you're using. This is what is recommended for choosing hyperparameters, the ideal set of parameters. So when I say random search, that is more suitable for large data sets. In our case, it's large only because we have around 10,000 records and with large number of parameter settings, whereas grid search search in a more precise hyperparameter tuning, resulting in a better model performance. And that is the difference between, you know, the tip between which one to go about with either random search or grid search. And we will optimize on the F1 matrix. So let us go ahead with F1 matrix, uh, you know, to give you clarity as to what is F1 matrix. F1 matrix is the harmonic mean of, uh, you know, uh, it's something like the, uh, this one. I'll just show you the formula of F, uh, F1 matrix exactly. So when I talked about, you know, I've explained you what is accuracy, uh, what is precision, recall. So F1 matrix is a harmonic mean of precision and recall. So when I say harmonic mean, it is 2 into precision into recall divided by precision plus recall. This is the formula of F1 score and it is a balance between precision and recall. So that is, you know, particularly useful when class distribution is imbalanced. So, you know, this is one particular you know, uh, technique I would like to emphasize on that whenever your data is imbalanced, consider going with F1 media, F1 score for your evaluation because that is where your imbalanced data will actually, you'll get an idea as to how your model is performing. So go ahead with F1 score and ROC AUC curve also performs, you know, it evaluates accuracy of classification models and it's better suited for imbalanced data. Accuracy, as you see, this is the formula for accuracy, which uh, measures the number of correct predictions made by the model. This is the formula. Precision, it evaluates the accuracy of a model's positive prediction. So it only takes into consideration the positive predictions of a class and evaluates the performance. Recall is sensitivity, which evaluates the model's ability to identify positive instances of a data set, this being the formula. Now, you know, among these four most common techniques, this is for classification, by the way, for regression, you have a different set of parameters, which are, you know, mean, absolute uh, error. You have the error measures, basically, mean squared error, root mean squared error, R squared, and so on. But I'll be delving into more into that classification. I'll be focusing more on the classification because since the problem at hand is binary classification for customer churn predictions. So among these, you know, classification matrix, I would say that for our data set, let's, you know, uh, focus on FN score and ROC AUC. And of course, the precision as well, you can go ahead with uh, because those will give us a better idea, better picture of the uh, performance of the model. So now that we've decided to do that, I've imported the matrix, by the way, to get now that you've understood what is classification report, we'll also plot the confusion matrix. You know, confusion matrix being a square matrix of uh, the uh, square matrix of the true positive, false positive. Then we have the false negative and the true negative. So of course, the true positive and the true negative anything true should be higher in order, in order to say that a model is performing better. So that is what is, you know, in the confusion matrix you should know about. So I've, you know, tried to display the confusion matrix using matplotlib library, which is PLT. 
uh, for each of these three, which is logistic regression, random forest, and decision tree. We have de developed the models. After building that, this is the overview of the confusion matrix we get for each. And now I'm also, you know, uh, since now we got to know what is AUC, ROC curve, metric of evaluation, let us also plot the AUC scores for them to get a better understanding as to how the models are performing with respect to AUCR, which is um, area under the curve. I will also explain you what is that. So area under the curve is a graphical representation for that for data visualization, you need PLT, which is uh, taken from the matplotlib library. Matrix or AUC will actually give you a score, which is an AUC score, which is again a metric for each of the algorithms we have built. That is a models, logistic regression, decision tree and random forest. For each of these, you get ROC. This is ROC DT, which is ROC for the decision tree. You get an AUC score of 0.55, which is moderate. ROC for logistic regression is pretty higher, which is 0.67, and it's super, you know, it's more than the uh, the one with decision tree. And for the random forest, you get 0.58, which is somewhere in between. So I would say that for our model, for our data set, I would recommend strongly to go ahead with ensemble methods, which is random forest. And also you can uh, also you can leverage logistic regression because it gives a pretty good score of AUC. Now, you know, now that you understood what is uh, imbalanced data, you know, the evaluation methods, something how to choose models to go with uh, you know it is sometimes it, it can be really very really dicey and challenging as to you know understand and go ahead proceed with this but then or you in the next video i'll be explaining you can actually leverage auto ml which automates this entire machine learning workflow in order to give you a better clarity as to you know it automatically compares the model's performance so it reduces the time as well to train the model and it, at the last it also gives you a score a better evaluation metric uh, so, uh, you know, something I would like to also talk about the data imbalance. Since our data is imbalanced, one way to deal with imbalanced data is through oversampling and undersampling. Now, oversampling and undersampling, as I was explaining you, uh, we have the minority classes and the majority classes in the data set because the data set is unevenly distributed. So, when you are actually reducing the size of the majority data set, majority classes, so that is where you are undersampling you are actually reducing the size of the majority classes. But when you are adding or duplicating more minority classes synthetically, that is where it's called as oversampling. So SMOT is such a technique which is done here. SMOT stands for synthetic um, minority oversampling techniques. Synthetic minority oversampling because you're oversampling the minority classes. You're adding or duplicating more of the minority classes. Minority classes are the ones which are present in less distribution or less proportion. Uh, the less number as compared to the majority classes. So in our data set, we, you know, we previously, I, I was just explaining in a previous video, you had like around 80% of majority classes and only 20 classes, 20% 20 of the classes were minority classes. So when you try to increase the size of the minority classes, you get a, a you know, fairly even distribution of the classes, both minority and majority, that is the customer churning and the customer not churning. That is where, uh, and you can, uh, in order to build this, you know, get, uh, do this, perform this more technique on the imbalance data, you need to uh, import IMB learn, which is IMB learn not oversampling, import SMOT technique. So you're importing the SMOT uh, library from that, the package, uh, I import the SMOT library from this IMB learn package, and then you're calling in the SMOT classifier, and finally, you know, resampling. It's a it's a resampling technique. So that is why you fit resample is required. So method in Python, and then you're passing in the parameters of the training. You know, the training parameters which X train and Y train. Finally, counter on the Y train SM. SM stands for smote. And then before counter, you get this value, and after counter, this value. So zero stands for not churn or not exited customers. One means exited customers. So this way you can actually increase synthetically. You know, you can minority classes can actually be added or oversampled by using this oversampling technique, which is smooth technique. That was all about, you know, machine learning, model, model selection, model evaluation, how to deal with imbalanced data, something called the smooth technique, undersampling, oversampling. In the next video, you know, this particular process can be automated using a very uh, interesting uh, module of AutoML, which is PyCaret. You will also get to learn about AutoML modules with PyCaret, how to go about with that, which saves your time. So do not miss, miss out on the upcoming video. Do stay tuned for, uh, you know, more interesting videos on Project Pro YouTube channel. You can check out their Project Pro uh, blogs as well, which are very in-depth written, and you can get a clear picture of machine learning, deep learning, and so on. That is all from my side. Thank you and stay tuned.